Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 4. This is going to be my finale ending video, so we're going to be breaking it down, explaining what happened towards the end, what it sets up for next season, and mainly to do with the cliffhangers. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. So thank you for all of you guys who came up to me at the Ultimates, took some photos with some of you guys, made some new fans. It was really, really cool. I loved it. I actually got to meet Kyla Lee. I got to meet Nicole Maines, and I got to see everyone else on stage, but I got photos with those two. It was so much fun, and I loved it. I'm going to be going to MCM London Comic Con this week. Tyler Hoechlin's going to be there, as well as Stephen Amell and Emily Bet Ricards. Also, I'll be at San Diego Comic Con this summer, so if you see me at any of those two events, please be sure to say hi, because it means the world to me, and it's very exciting to see some of you guys in real life, you know, put the name to their face. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get into this video. So, the ending of Supergirl Season 4 was brilliant. I absolutely loved it. It really reminded me of Season 1's ending. Like I said in my review earlier today, which will obviously go into more depth as to what's happening next season, but I mentioned that it felt like season one's finale because of the music playing beneath it as Alex kisses Kelly and it goes into it and the music continues into them having their own game night. And it was at that moment where I was like, yeah, this is amazing. And it was really giving me the feels because it felt like a nice homage to season one and it really worked. So basically the ending starts about five to ten minutes into the end of the episode where Alex kisses Kelly for the first time. I say that's where it starts. That's where the music starts and I think that's the cue point where we say this is the end of the episode. So Alex gets a new girlfriend. Awesome. I absolutely felt for that moment and I totally ship it. Although, as you know, I'm a big Maggie and Alex fan. They really grew on me. And I'm still not over that. I really would like Maggie back. But I like this. I like Alex and Kelly. They have a true connection. They have chemistry. And I look forward to seeing Alex doing some more stuff that's not just in the DEO. That excites me. And so we move on and we see Brainy and Nia together. That's the thing that's going to be carrying on to next season. Nicole Maines actually at the Ultimates teased that Brainy and Nia's love relationship is actually going to continue next season definitely because they've been confirmed to return next season as well and so Lena shows up and she's not really there because she is sort of in a different place because she has had the revelation that Kara is Supergirl and she's going to be dealing with that next season and at the end of the episode we get Lena cracking using a glass a photo of Kara and Alex obviously very symbolic of their broken relationship now and the fact that she's probably going to be evil she's going to be bad I wouldn't actually say necessarily like straight up evil I think she's just gonna be scheming and doing stuff that is more dark than usual okay so we get this game night with all the family and they're all together love that moment what a great moment especially when Kara sees that Lena comes in and she's like, oh, Jean's making us switch up the usual teams, but you're with me, right? And you get this amazing moment with Kara and Alex together, and then you have Ben Lockwood's son rectifying what's going on, so no more Children of Liberty, and then we go to the true sort of cliffhangers of the episode. That was the end before the end, before the cliffhangers, basically. So we get this, and it's on a normal street, and we see Eve sitting there, she's got a wig on, she's got the brown hair, and she's got a hoodie on, and so she's on the run, as you can tell. And so a mystery old woman comes up and sit ne sits next to her, and initially I was like, oh shit, this is Lex Luthor in disguise somehow, because, you know, we're like, hmm, why would this woman want to talk to Eve? And how does she know who she is, basically? And she says, we will always find you, Eve. And then Eve says, who are you? I did everything you asked. I worked for him. I hurt people for him. And then the old woman replies, Lex was supposed to move the needle. He failed. And then she says, Leviathan is everywhere. Leviathan is everyone. Leviathan is coming. So what an end. I was like, oh my God, who the heck is Leviathan? Who is coming next season? I loved it. Very much so reminded me 
of how they tease Rain at the end of season two when the makers came on and they were like, she will grow strong on earth, she will reign. And that was a very, very similar moment where they mentioned the name, but they don't really show anything. But in this, we see that the people turn around, every single person turns around. So as she says, Leviathan is everywhere, Leviathan is everyone, Leviathan is coming. That's when we get that moment. So I can infer from this that this Leviathan person, entity, organization, We'll explain what Leviathan is in the comics in just a second, but I, from this episode, you can tell that somehow it's been able to infiltrate a lot of the population. I think maybe it may be one creature controlling a load of different people. I think that's sort of what's going to be happening. That's what you can infer from the finale. So Eve has been working for them the whole time. So Eve has not just been secretly working for Lex, but she's been double crossing Lex and she's been working with Leviathan. So it seems like she's not part of their plan. So will Eve be killed? Will she be locked away? I think she may be, you know, chucked away for now and then she'll come back because I think she plays into this Leviathan stuff and I think she will have a redemption arc next season. So. Who's Leviathan in the comics? So we briefly explained it in today's review, which you can check out on the channel right now. And so Leviathan is given to three different beings or three different things. And Leviathan the first time was a creature with the obsessive hive mind of many children comprising of a single being. That's what it's quoted as being online. And so Basically, it's heavily to do with Batman, and this was later expanded into an organization led by Talia al Ghul, who we've actually seen on Arrow, and so we have this sort of link between what could be happening and what has happened in the past if it was, say, Talia al Ghul, which it's not going to be Talia al Ghul who's going to be showing up, but I have the feeling that it's most likely this version of Leviathan in terms of it's going to be an organization, but not like the Children of Liberty. I reckon it will be one figure actually sort of mind controlling or manipulating people because it seems like that's what they've been doing to Eve and maybe that's why Eve was spazzing out a bit. I'm not sure, but I think it all links into the idea of many people being controlled by one person and it's not just like politically that someone lines up. I think it's literally taken over because why would those people on the street like random people all turn around at once doesn't make sense so i would say that they're all being controlled somehow okay so let's move on to talk about the next version of leviathan so in the comics legion of superheroes actually which is very fitting for supergirl was the name used by a counterpart to colossal boy from the legion of superheroes and so He's actually good, so I highly doubt that it's going to be that, but when you initially see that he's linked to the Legion of Superheroes, you're like, oh shit, are they going to bring back Win this way? Are they going to link this? Maybe this is a future version of Leviathan that is actually a hero, and maybe they do link it. So I think that will be an interesting way to bring the Legion back, and obviously we want Monel back. I'm not sure if he's going to return this season or not. We want to see Imra. Well, I do personally. I want to see all these Legion members because I loved the Legion. I thought they were great. And I reckon because we know Brainy staying this season, I reckon he's going to go back to the future at some point and hopefully Wim returns. But they said he's going to try and return next season. But the other version of Leviathan is actually a new character. And so this new one is to do with Superman. And we don't really know that much because it's not actually come out yet. That's going to be coming out sometime later this summer so maybe they're going with that new comic but we don't know much about that right now so not much can be said about that right now but also there was this character called Leviathan again and that was in Legends of Tomorrow it's not going to be that character just to tell you guys because it shares a name doesn't mean it's going to be the same thing it's definitely not going to be the same thing okay so let's move on and we're going to talk about this last post credit scene and so the portal opens a hooded figure meets the monitor so the monitor uses his portal you can tell by the way it opens it's the same as how arrow ended this season and he 
portal through essentially he got this person out on purpose that must be noted he's chosen and the monitor is not a villain you must remember that even though he may feel like a villain he's not he's doing it all for the good to prepare the universe for the anti-monitor so it's very vital to what's going to happen and i think because what's revealed is he's a martian he is john jones's brother his mystery brother that has been missing for all this time it's going to play into i reckon how martian manhunter plays into the crossover okay so this is a new villain i'm not actually sure as to if leviathan is going to be the main villain or john's brother but i reckon john's brother is going to be the villain for the first part of the season and then leviathan seems like a bigger thing and because crisis is only up to you know the end of the mid season with the monitor getting him out i reckon it's going to be just the first part of the season then we'll go on to finishing off the leviathan stuff that they tease so it's two different villains that they're teasing in this episode so you've been trapped for too long a phantom to your people and at this point i was like oh my god is this phantom stranger because he plays a big part in crisis on infinite earth so i was like oh shit is this happening but no it says now it is time to avenge yourself against the brother who wronged you and at that point i was like hmm okay kind of not thinking phantom stranger anymore and then he says you must walk the path yourself and besides i have one more place to visit we find out that place and we'll talk about that in just a sec so this is john's brother it's revealed via the dialogue and so who is john's brother so in the comics his name is malafaic and i have no idea if i'm saying it right or if i'm saying it wrong because it is not english basically so yeah go read it and you will see what it looks like it will be on the screen right now and so we're just going to call him John's brother because that's much easier for me. And he was an architect of an extinction level event called Haromir's Curse in the comics. And basically, as it's described online, it's a plague of fire that cursed the Martians who lived on that earth via their telepathic abilities. And just a quick note, that was actually kind of explored in some of the animated shows and the animated films recently with Jean Jones on some of the iterations actually being affected by a similar effect with his mind being engulfed with fire. Actually, I think it was on Young Justice, so that's a nice shout out right there. And so let's carry on to talk about Jean's brother. So wherever a Martian attempted to use their psionic gifts or commune with the great mind, they were full victim to the curse and ultimately burned to death. So in a literal way, not just burning in their mind. With the exception of Jean, his brother, and himself obviously, nearly all the Green Martians were killed as a result of his handiwork. So obviously that's a change from the comics and a change from the White Martians destroying everything. So maybe something like that will be involved in, you know, maybe he was the root cause of the White Martians rebelling and killing all the Green Martians because... Yeah, it seems like the White Martians, it was just in like their DNA to do it. So maybe he was the one that was like, yeah, I'm going to manipulate all these White Martians to do this. So for centuries, Malefaic continued to live in the ruins of Mars that he caused, obviously. Unaware that Jean survived the plague and he had been transported to Earth in order to survive. So he comes back and then he actually meets Jean. They have many fights and... It continues like that throughout the comics and so he's been around for a decent amount of time he came in about late 90s and he was a big thing in Martian Manhunter's comics and so he's played a role in some of the animated stuff recently so maybe go check that out before the season because he's very interesting he was in Justice League Doom if I can recall right and yeah he's very interesting but in the show with him being his long-lost brother I reckon what's going to be happening is maybe he is the root cause of the destruction that the White Martians cause. But I think he will definitely be called Malefaic in the show. There is no reason why they would call him something else. And I think by the end of his arc, he may transform into a more demonic version of himself. Because in the comics, his head is a bit more demonic and it's kind of different. But I guess it's very similar because you know his depiction like his skin is the exact same green as Jean but his head's a bit different so I reckon that might change because he looked identical to Jean because they are twins 
but they do look a bit different in the comics so I think they may build up to him being transformed into a more demonic version of Jean in a literal way just like how Rain transformed at points where you saw her in her demon form so I think that's very very interesting so let me know in the comments down below are you super excited to see Jean's brother as a villain for maybe the whole season or half the season but I reckon half and so the final scene is we see Lex Luthor his dead corpse his dead body and he's met by the very much so alive monitor so this is what he talked about in regards to Jean's brother what he said he says besides I have one more place to visit and to remember everything the monitor does leads into crisis on infinite earths and what's to come in stopping the anti-monitor so whatever he did with Lex at the end he twirls his hand around and you see the blue light it seems like we are meant to infer that he is alive he revives him and I think he is alive I don't think Lex is actually dead and so this sets up crisis because I think in regards to what they're gonna do they may try and include Lex because in the comics Alexander Luthor is a big thing so maybe they actually play a twist on that but in regards to our version of Lex I think if he comes back alive which it's obviously inferred he does Lex makes his own team in the comics to help stop the anti-monitor at a point so I think it may play into that and Lex obviously wants to save the earth we've seen this many times he wants to not destroy the earth but rule the earth rule America rule National City rule everything and be the president essentially that's what he tried to do this season but failed and he will always try and do that but he will always protect the earth first and that's seen many times in the comics and also seen recently in the animated films most recently was actually the death of Superman and also the reign of Superman and he tried to save the earth he was like trying to be the earth's hero like he did last episode so I think he will play into the crossover somehow so thank you guys so much for watching if you did enjoy this video and this did help you out in regards to what to expect next season who are these people what's Leviathan and who is John's brother please be sure to leave a like and a comment subscribe turn on notifications to not miss any videos over the summer so i'll see you guys later goodbye